Good morning and welcome to Let's Talk. Thank you for joining us for this half hour. Now, let's talk. And good morning and welcome to Let's Talk. I'm Tracy Morgan. Always nice to have you with us, especially on a Monday morning about this time. This is our 30 minutes that we get to sit and chat with great professionals in and around the area that affect you right here in Butler County. And today is our day with Compassionate Certification Centers. And of course, we have the one location in downtown Butler. So we've been talking to them for the past few months. It's always great to have them on again, and we'll do that in just a moment with Ken Schultz. But let me first give you the rundown of how you can listen, because I know that you do have us on the radio. Uh, Of course, you have us online at WISR680.com. You can get us on your Alexa powered device, or you also have that free app that you can download to your smartphone. So once you have that, it's fine. You can listen to us mobile on your mobile device that way. So whatever is good for you is good for us. We do have the podcast of the day, and this will be it. And you would get on our website to find that after we're done. So give us just a couple of minutes after we're done, and it'll be all set. All right, let's do it. Ken Schultz is with us today with Compassionate Certification Centers. He is the National Sales Director with CCC. Hello, Ken. How you doing today? It's nice to talk to you. I'm staying dry, Tracy, but I'm doing well. Yeah, right? How are you? <laughs> staying indoors. We're not taking class outside today. <laughs> not without an umbrella, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, okay. So we've talked to you many times, uh, or Compassionate Certification Centers, and knowing that you are you have many locations, we have our location, we can claim your location right here in Butler, and it's always nice to be able to, to go inside and get information, but it's always that walk across the street to get in there that I think people hesitate a little bit because this still seems to be a new topic for us. Do you still find that people come in and they just don't know what to even ask? Very much so. You know, it's, um, it's, I think it's going to be that way for quite a while, and that's why we do things like this with you. You know, we want to make sure that people do feel comfortable going across the street. You know, it's, uh, it's not frog or don't be afraid. <laughs> come on across <laughs> the street and, and come talk to us. Uh, but, you know, with medical cannabis being what it is right now and still having a little bit of a stigma attached to it, there, there is a lot going on where people are afraid to come out and want to come talk to us and find out if it's right for them. Um, whether it be from judgment from within or judgment from family members or friends where they feel like, hey, maybe I shouldn't touch that just yet. But we're here to tell you that, hey, it's safe. You know, medical marijuana and, and CBD in particular are a couple of the options that we have available for you that are absolutely dropping that stigma and starting to show that they really are medicine. Ken, let's talk about you for a moment, because we have talked to different representatives from Compassionate Certification Centers before, and first time we got, get to talk to you as the National Sales Director. What interested you in this kind of work? What's your background that you thought this was a great fit? Well, it's interesting, actually. Um, you know, I never in a million years thought I'd be in the marijuana industry or cannabis industry. You know, I grew up a military family, and I was taught at a very young age that, you know, drugs are bad. And this was, marijuana was one of those drugs that that my family would point to and say, hey, that's bad. So, you know, me being a, a good son, well, not always, but, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to claim it. Generally speaking, right? Yeah. Lies, right? <laughs> but, you know, being the good son and being the, a good student, I always said, okay, well, I'm told not to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and stay away. But what ended up happening is, you know, through what I used to do is I, I went into the health and wellness industry. And through health and wellness, I started learning how to help people with what I call preventive care. So I was a nutritionist. I would help people with their diets. I would help people understand their, their metabolism to get the most out of their bodies and to not only lose weight, but to feel better and have more energy throughout the day. So I had a lot of clients that I would work with that, you know, I would, I would work them out physically and I'd also work them out um, mentally in order to just overall have a better quality of life. And so through that, I kept on doing research and I kept on learning more and more and more about different aspects of how medicine was moving forward. So we, I can make it available to my patient or to my clients. They're really not patients. I'm not a doctor. I don't want to misspeak. We have plenty of those in our, in, in our company, but through that, through that journey and through that time that I spent working with clients, I started to hear more and more about cannabis, cannabis this, cannabis that. Uh, and then what, what ended up happening is, um, I don't know if this is a shocker to you or not, Tracy, but my own wife, Melanie Kachi, who is the CEO of the company, she, being a chronic pain patient, she found relief through cannabis. And so it was a natural transition for me to jump on board with the company. 
Uh, I'll be honest, I really didn't want to just because, you know, working with your wife can sometimes be uh, a bit of a challenge. But she really does complete me in the ways that that in, in a fashion that I, I can. And I think I do the same for her. And so we when we started the company with Dr. Brian Donner, we really started to to see results. You know, we started to see results across stages across the country. Whenever we started to research what medical cannabis actually was and how we could help bring it to the Pittsburgh area. So, you know, my job initially, whenever I came on, Melanie had asked me to come on and help with the conference. So I came on and I got the opportunity to travel around the country. I'd go to different conferences, um, Las Vegas conferences, San Diego conferences. Uh, you know, I got a chance to go see some of the industry leaders at the time and to really see where they were at and to see where it was going and to see how we can plug ourselves in and really help move it along and make sure that the transition from medical cannabis to the Pennsylvania area would be as seamless as possible. So I was first tasked with doing a lot of the sales for the World Medical Cannabis Conference and Expo down at David L. Lawrence Convention Center. We had our first one, was it 2016 we had our first one? I'm sorry, 17 was our first one, 18 was our second one. And so prior to me being involved with the CPD and helping the patients on a one-on-one level, I did that. I helped to bring everybody into the Pittsburgh area in order to educate the patients in the Pittsburgh area about medical cannabis and CBD. And then over time, as we started seeing patients, we made CBD part of our treatment plans that we were putting in play right there inside the office. And so that's where I stepped in there, and I, I was able to come on board and start to help with a lot of the the research aspect of it, is figuring out what companies we can work with from CBD to make sure we had a high-grade quality product that we can offer our patients. So that's what I've been doing since. So let me ask you about the terminology that you used. Very easy, though, but you mentioned preventative care before. When people come to you, are they looking for the preventative care, or do they already have a condition that they're trying to find relief from? Well, you know, when people come into our offices, a lot of them are already coming in looking for relief. We're not exactly in a prevention stage at that point. Uh, so a lot of our patients are already coming in. You know, the most common ailment that we have walk through our doors is chronic pain still. So when patients walk through a door with chronic pain, they've, they've already tried numerous other approaches, and they're really looking for an alternative option at this point, where then they're, we're able to you know, employ our doctors and our nurses to go out and to help that patient to understand exactly what a medical cannabis treatment plan might look like. So the CBD portion is where I help out at. Is, you know, I give our doctors and our nurses the tools they need to make sure that the CBD that we're able to offer inside our offices are in fact safe, are in fact high grade, high quality. And what's in our tinctures and our capsules, uh, we want our doctors and our nurses feeling comfortable that exactly what it says in the bottle is exactly what's inside there. So that's a lot of how I help out with that process. How do you help patients understand this, this alternative choice, if you will? Because a lot of folks may sit and think, one, I don't understand it, or two, I'm very comfortable with my PCP and I really do what we have worked out and and that's fine but still I'm hurting and still I feel like there's an answer that could be found but yet I'm not comfortable enough yet to walk across that street (laughs) and and walk into your doors how do you convince people that this is this is a different choice for them well honestly look at our website and talk to and look at some of the stories the real life testimonials that our patients are giving um you know I'd be happy to give you mine while, while we're on the air Uh, I myself, I played Mm -hmm. a little bit of contact sports in my day, and now the 40 is here. My body's telling me that uh, it wasn't exactly the best thing for me. So (laughs) You're feeling it now. I was a lot of pain myself. (laughs) Yeah. Now, about three years ago, if you'd asked me how I treated that pain, I I had ibuprofen, I had aspirin, Tylenol. I had all those over-the-counter drugs that, you know, I might as well put them in a pet container and walk around with them Mm -hmm. because that's what I was doing. And over time, that's not healthy for your liver. So we know that. You know, that's something that, we, that we've that we learned, and we know that too much of that is, is poor for our livers. And, and it may help with the pain temporarily, but it's not helping us long term. Now, three years ago, I started using CBD. Now, just to make sure everybody does understand, CBD does not get you high. It does not have the psychoactive effects. Because, again, three years ago, I'm still coming from the, the, the old school thinking of, you know, Cheech and Chong, right? Where if I use marijuana or anything yeah. associated with marijuana, yeah. then I'm going to be high and my family's going to call me a stoner, <laughs> which yeah. obviously mm-hmm. I didn't want. 
So I started using CBD three years ago, and I'm happy to say to this day, I haven't touched an ibuprofen, an Advil, or anything of that nature. And my pain is 75% less than what it was at that time. So do you use CBD? And it's consistent. Do you, yeah, I was going to say consistent. How about the consistency question? Do you use CBD for chronic condition because of the consistency of the pain? Or can you use it? For the reason I chuckled a moment ago is because I think I just did too much work around the house and all of a sudden my muscles are just, you know, tight. Can you use it for short-term relief in, in a scenario like that? Well, we have options for both. Okay. So what, what we recommend is, you know, what, I'm, what I just spoke about with myself, I, I primarily use a tincture. Okay. My, me, myself, I'm on 50 milligrams of CBD per day. And that's, that's kind of how I keep the inflammation down in my system. So the way CBD works is it works with your endocannabinoid system, which if you've heard one of Dr. Donner's sessions on here, uh, you know that has a CB1 and a CB2 receptor associated with it, which works on your neural system and your immune system. Now, when you continually use CBD over time, it helps to bring those two systems back to what we call homeostasis, balance. So by doing that, that helps. That has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties. So I'm taking it every day to help keep the inflammation down in my joints where I'm feeling the pain at. But, of course, sometimes, you know, I'm a, I like to call myself a recovering meathead sometimes. I often think that I can pick up heavy stuff and put it down still like I did <laughs> yes, in my 20s. Yes, right, yeah. And uh, yeah. it's just not true. <laughs> so <laughs> when things like that happen, then uh, we have a muscle gel that works for that. So if my shoulder, for example, if I'm, or even if I'm around the house doing some work like you described, and I start to feel some tightness and some stiffness in my joint, such as my shoulder, then we have a muscle gel available that works uh, um, topically, that works very fast acting, and it can help reduce that inflammation and give you some relief. Can you talk about drug testing for work and what products are good and what products do we stay away from even though this is medical marijuana or CBD or you know th this is alternative options for treatment, aren't there still some products that will show and, and test positive on a drug test? Well, anything you get from a dispensary, you're going to test positive for THC. And that's what we do with the cards. When we issue the cards, then that card is your pass to get into a dispensary to obtain medicine that way. Uh, all that medicine is geared towards THC. Um, they do have some CBD products, but the majority of it is all um, highly high dose THC. Now, the products that we have on hand that we can sell you within our centers, they are CBD. They are non psychoactive, and there are zero to trace amounts of THC in there, less than 0.3%. Um, the new farm bill that came out says that they can have uh, a trace amount of THC, but not more than 0.3%. So what we do to ensure that, because those are products, if you have a job or anything of that nature that's going to test you for THC and for marijuana use, those are the products that are safe for you to take, okay, without testing positive because they don't have THC in them. Now, what we do to ensure that they don't have THC all of our, is we test all of our products up to three times. So before the product even becomes the product, the, the extraction process takes place, and it's tested there to see if any THC is left behind. And then once they have that product go through the extraction process where they're getting out the cannabinoids and, and everything that, that creates the, the medicinal value of the plant, then they put it into either a tincture or a capsule or a muscle cream, um, whatever it may be, then that product gets tested again to make sure that no THC made its way through. And then what we do here at Compassion Certification Centers is once we receive our batch, the stuff that we're going to sell to the public, we do a blind test. So we take a random bottle, a random tincture, uh, we remove all the labeling, and then we have another lab that we send it out to to test and make sure that it is A, THC free, and then B, we want to see what kind of percentages of other cannabinoids are in there. Because CBD is the one we talk about most often. But our product is what we call broad spectrum, which has not just CBD, but CBG, CBN, uh, a couple other cannabinoids that, that can help with your ailments as well. Ken Schultz is with us, a national sales director for Compassionate Certification Centers. Of course, we have our center in right downtown Butler. And I, I'm glad you're explaining the system that you all go through to make sure that your products are good, because I want you to explain, if you don't mind, that 
not all places, without naming anybody in particular, but not all places are testing like you were testing. So if you're going just anywhere, you're not really getting the, the real stuff, are you? Or is there just a trace amount? I mean, why can, why can everybody just sell this kind of product? Well, this is the fun part about the industry right now. You know, we're going through a, a whole other level of a green rush. Um, just to talk about the business perspective for a quick second so everybody understands, um, hemp-based CBD is projected to, or hemp alone, is projected to be a $22 billion industry. And every time I say billion, I feel like doing the um, Dr. Evil from Austin Powers, right? Yeah, $22 right? billion mm-hmm. dollar industry and by the year 2022. So what's happening is you have a lot of people that are that are scrambling to get into that industry. And there's actually 80% more hemp seeds in the ground at this time right now than there was last year at this time. So that's the, the bubble that we're sitting on right now when it comes to this. And and honestly, the FDA is – they're scrambling. They, they really – they know that this has some medicinal value, and and they just want to know how much, and they want to know how to regulate it. And they're not quite there yet. They need some help. And, and honestly, that's what companies like us are here for, is we want to we wanna show the efficacy of CBD. So, you know, what we're doing to make sure that does happen, because to answer your question about some of the other companies out there, uh, a lot of people are just there for the financial reasons, you know. And, you know, I, look, I'm a business management guy. I understand that. I don't hold, I don't hold them to that. You know, um, more power to them. But here at CCC, we're here for the patient. The reason why we even started carrying CBD was for the patient. It was not a part of our original business model. Our original business model was to educate people on the benefits of medical cannabis and then to have the dispensaries be able to supply everything. But over time, once we started certifying patients, we learned that a lot of the products in a dispensary are very high in THC. And not everybody needs high levels of THC. You know, we have one associate that works for us, and he describes about his grandmother, Nana, and how, you know, she would, the first couple times that she got some medicine, it was a little too much for her. And, you know, nobody wants Nana rocked on the rocker, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we started to look at other options and how we can facilitate our patients' needs. And so we started to bring CBD on board for that purpose. So what we do differently is we stay heavily geared towards the patient, not just in our efficacy in the product that we sell, but also pricing as well. You know, medical cannabis is an out-of-pocket product at this time. You know, until it is legally on a, until it is non-scheduled on a federal level, your insurance company is not going to touch it. They're not going to cover it for you. It's, they still consider it to be a Schedule One drug, and so your insurance will not cover it. So we know that for our patients to find relief, this has to come out of pocket. So when we start looking at how we want to price our CBD, you know, you'll you'll find some CBD priced very high. We wanted to make it affordable for the patient. So when you look at our pricing, you'll find that our pricing is a lot of times 20 or 30 percent lower than some of the competition that you'll find in gas stations or, you know, vape shops or, or somewhere else like that where people are carrying CBD and selling a large amount of it. Uh, and, again, those are people that uh, – it, it's unfortunate, but the pricing and the margins that they have available to them, they're, they're capitalizing on it, and they're business people. So, again, I don't feel I – don't, I don't fault them for that. However, here at CCC, we're focused on the patient. So to give you an example, our 1,000-milligram tincture, for example – it retails at $62.50, and whenever you buy it inside our office, then you save an additional 10% inside the office with your visit. So we're selling that, we're selling that particular tincture for under $60, whereas if you go to a lot of other places, you're paying upwards of $80 or more. So it's interesting that you go through a rigorous testing progress process, but at the same time, as a potential patient – or client, I should say, it, it gives me peace of mind to know that you are caring about your product so much that you are testing them and going through that process for me to be able to be assured that I'm getting what I'm buying, even if it's at a 10% discount. So I think it's a great thing that you were explaining the process that you go through. Let me jump on something that you you said only because it, it brought to mind a conversation that I was talking uh, through with with a woman, she I don't know her scenario. That's the problem is I can't give her her whole scenario. What's in her life? What she takes? But 
she had said she she took CBD and she goes, in a sense, that was a little too much for me. You know, back to that comment that you made where it was a little too much for someone. Do you have to get the right dosage for the right person? Is that how you figure out or is it the right product for the right person? Dosing is a big part of it. Um, you know, uh, the products that you'll find in some other places, not that they're completely different to ours. You know, there are some products on the market other than ours that that carry a lot of the same efficacy as we do. Uh, but how do you properly use it is where us being doctors and nurses, that really gives us a bit of a benefit because we understand the human body and how it interacts with medicine. So we have a dosing system that we have in play, and we put all of our patients on a dosing system based on their ailment, whether it be mild, medium, severe, and then we, we have a starting point for them. And then from there, we have an application that the patient can download, and they can use that application to track their daily progress. So if they wake up and, you know, they have a shoulder pain at uh, level 9, they take X amount of CBD, and within X amount of time, their, their pain is now at, you know, a 5. So then we can start to figure out what dose and what timing is right for them because medical cannabis across the board is still a recommendation, not a dosing. You know, we, we can't tell every single patient to walk in and smoke two joints and call me in the morning, and this is exactly what you can expect. We don't have the, the luxury of that. So a lot of what we're doing is working with our patients on a one-on-one -on -one level and through the app that we have available for them to find what dose is right for them. Because, if, if you again, if you've heard Dr. Donner's uh, – segue a podcast, you know, everybody's endocannabinoid system isn't identical. You know, it's not one size fits all. Everybody's is a little bit different. So that's why you'll hear a lot of stories about people that have tried CBD, but it didn't work for them. Well, chances are their dosing was probably off. Um, you know, their timing and, and everything along those lines probably wasn't exactly where they needed to be. And without somebody to help educate them, it was never going to get there. Well, that's the gap that we're trying to fill, is we're trying to be those people for you. Compassionate Certification Centers, 127 East Cunningham Street in Butler. It's Compassionate Certification Centers, or CCC. You can call it that as well. What is the most common age range that you have of patients that are coming to see you? Are you seeing little kids? Are you, are you seeing the elderly, everybody in between? Who do you see? It's a wide range. <laughs> it truly is. Uh, with the 21 conditions that the state put forward, it, uh, it encompasses a large portion of the population. You know, there's a lot more medical cannabis patients out there than what they, they actually realize. You know, as people are, are starting to hear the stories about the ailment they have and how medical cannabis has been able to help, whether it be THC or CBD, or ideally a combination of both, um, more and more are coming out, out of the woodwork and wanting to learn more. So, you know, we see everything from young autistic children to, you know, elderly folks that that have chronic pain or, or something along those lines. When you're talking about the conditions, I know we talked about chronic pain, and you had mentioned that early in the show. But what other qualifying conditions are there? I know you mentioned the 21, but you don't have to mention all 21, but what are the most common around here that people are coming to see you for? Uh, chronic pain is number one. Um, so that is that is hands down what we see more patients for. Um, there's a large portion of PTSD. You know, our veterans have, have gone through a, a lot of traumatic experiences on, on our behalf. And, you know, PTSD is one of the ailments that I'm, I'm very grateful that the, um, the state put out there because we, we get a lot of those guys as well and gals. So we see a lot of those patients. Um, a lot of people with digestive problems are coming through. Um, that's it's really amazing the, the amount of people that come through uh, for autism as well. You know, the PA is one of the only states that actually set autism as one of the 21 qualifying conditions. So that's uh, that's very exciting because to see some of the children that are on the spectrum and to see their functionality go, I mean, it's amazing the, 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 the difference once they start using some of the medicine and how much more functional they become. So um, can, we have a couple of videos on our website at cccregister.com and also through our social media outlets. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, Facebook. We have a lot of different videos that we've posted that will show you um, the medicine actually taking effect with a, with an autistic child. And the results are absolutely amazing. I mean, it, to be honest with you, this is really, the, the young autistic children are really what got me bought in. Um, you know, when we had the conference and I started seeing some of the young kids walk across stage, 
and tell their story and tell their, their how their quality of life has improved. You know, that's one of those things that uh, it'll get me every time. Absolutely. So, well, and, and can, you know, there's, there's 21 conditions. Well, when you mention the 21 but conditions, the Ken, ones right there. yeah, when you mention those 21 conditions, do you, are, are you meaning that every state has a different list of conditions? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Every medical marijuana program is on a state by state basis. And so it's up to the state government to lay out these conditions. So what happens if we come to you, we're, you certify us or get us the card or what, and, and we're a patient of yours, and then we go on vacation? Are we allowed to go cross state lines and take our medicine with us? Is that still legal, or do we have to stay within Pennsylvania in order to take the medicine? With the THC-based medication, you do want to stay within Pennsylvania, or you want to reach out to the state you're traveling to and see if they have reciprocity to see if they will accept your medical card within that state. Some some states do, some states don't. Uh, that's something that you want to do a little bit of research on before you go, uh, just to be safe. And then you would have to purchase that medicine inside that state. You're not allowed to take uh, any kind of medical marijuana across state lines at this time. Oh, that's a very good point, too. So let's just say we're, well, I don't want to name a state because um, uh, they may not have what you're talking about. So let's just say we go across state lines. So you're saying we would have to plan ahead to purchase it where our destination is going to be, which is important to know because if you're driving, if you do a road trip and it takes you two or three days to get to your destination, you may be in different states along the way. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's still not where we want it to be, the program. And, you know, we're waiting on it to be federally decriminalized, which will be ideal for our patients. Uh, so, so at this time, you know, there are still some, some downfalls to the way the program works. But what we're finding, though, is that uh, a lot of the other states are starting to share reciprocity, and, which is great because it's, um, you know, we're well past the tipping point now. There's more than uh, we're roughly around 30 states that are medically legal throughout the country, so we're we're past that halfway point. So we're well on our way to getting all 50. Uh, but until that does in fact happen, though, you you just have to plan ahead a little more. And there's that's the about the last traces of the stigma that are still left on this. Uh, outside that, you know, it's we're we're able to help a lot of people. We're able to get a lot of the patients here in the state of Pennsylvania some relief that otherwise they weren't able to find. Ken Schultz, the National Sales Director with us with Compassionate Certification Centers. There are many different locations throughout, I say, the area, Western PA, but uh, 127 East Cunningham Street is our location right here in Butler. So if you're thinking about doing this and you want to give them a call or look them up on the website and then go ahead to the office, it's 127 East Cunningham Street in Butler. And Ken, we really only have about a minute left with you, but I just wanted to ask you your final thoughts, what you want to leave with us today about Compassionate Certification Centers and CBD? Uh, if I was going to leave you with anything, I would say to uh, not be afraid to cross the street. I guess I'll leave it with how you started it. You know, when you come into one of our offices, which you can expect, um, I'll tell you right now, our staff is fully prepared to, to handle a- any kind of questions that you have when you walk in. They are fully trained to, to deal with any kind of emotional state that you may be in when you walk in. Uh, a lot of our patients walk in looking for one of two things, either empathy, because they truly are at the at their end of their rope. You know, they're, they've tried everything they can try, and they just want some relief. And medical cannabis offers some opportunity for that. You know, if we're able to get that person the relief they're looking for, then we've done our jobs, and we're extremely excited about it. And other patients come in with that other, with just that, excitement. You know, some patients that walk into our buildings are so over the top excited because, you know, if I'm being honest, a lot of them have been self-medicating with with cannabis for quite some time. And, you know, a lot of those patients, I know they're out there that are probably still doing that. And that's that scares me a little bit just because, you know, I'm not going to lie. One time whenever I was younger, I remember walking through Monroeville Mall and I had tried some cannabis that a friend had given me. Uh, I guess I just gave up my good student aspect there. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was bound to happen at some point, right? But I had a really bad experience, and I stayed away from cannabis for 30 years. You know, I didn't touch it. I absolutely stayed away from it. And some of the stuff that the that our patient that our possible patients are out self medicating with, we don't know where it's grown. We don't know how it's processed. We can't track it from seed to sale like we can here within the state program. So. 
we're here to help you find absolute relief. You know, when, when you come into our offices and you see one of our physicians and talk to some of our nurses and our staff, we're going to find out what's right for you. You know, we're not going to find out, you know, what Joe Schmo down the street has that might help. We're going to tell you the different strains that are available, but we're going to get you set up. So when you go into a dispensary and you talk to the pharmacist on hand, they know, they understand what you're going through and they understand whatever your ailment may be, and we can guide you towards the right product and the right strain of cannabis that's right for you. Ken Schultz. And what we find yeah. is that some patients, they don't need that the THC as well. So inside our offices with the CBD, we can help you with that as well. If that's what happens to work out for you based on your ailment, then we can get you started on that immediately as well. Fabulous. So Ken Schultz. Don't we, be afraid. Cross the street. Absolutely. Cross the street. Compassionate Certification Centers. And we're saying cross the street because if you know 127 East Cunningham Street, you know why we're ta- talking about that. So it's 127 East Cunningham Street, Compassionate Certification Centers. Ken, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Tracy. Have and a great day. You too. And folks, if you would like to listen to this again, it is on our website. It's WISR680.com. Go Programs, Let's Talk, and then look for Compassionate Certification Centers. I'm Tracy Morgan with Let's Talk. The information and opinions shared on this program are solely those of our guests and do not necessarily represent those of WISR, the Butler County Radio Network, or its staff and employees.